There are several ways in Scrum GS2 to have MIDI control different aspects of the interface. Now, to begin with, if you want to control any of these parameters in real time, we have a simple MIDI learn functionality. By right-clicking on any of the knobs, we can learn MIDI assignments, or we can, once they're learned, forget them. We can set minimum and maximum values. Let's say you want to assign a knob or a slider from your MIDI controller, or you can actually enter a value here and just put in a number, for example, like that. That'll set the value that's got nothing to do with MIDI. And we can set defaults and swap values even. So that's one way of assigning MIDI controllers to control different parameters here. Now, once we do that, we can manage all these MIDI assignments and other MIDI settings from this MIDI button up here. We have over here MIDI control change assignments. So if you've assigned a variety of knobs and sliders and you want to save that as a kind of template or default that loads each time you call up strum, you go save current as default and that will save the MIDI map and then it'll load every time you call up strum. And you can also load the default manually with that button or you can clear the MIDI map if you've created one. So once we're in this window, let's look at the rest. It's fairly self-explanatory. We can set the range of the pitch bend wheel to semitones as the default, but we can set it there. And we can also optionally have it create a slide effect. And this is most useful when we're in the keyboard mode of playback. We can also use aftertouch to affect pitch bends, which is actually a pretty intuitive playing technique. Just press harder on the key and it'll bend the note, which is intuitive. And we can set the range of semitones here. And we have a threshold control indicating at which value of the aftertouch do we want it to kick in, which is nice. You can really customize it to your own playing style. Now, we've looked at the live MIDI loop control a couple of videos ago, so I'm not going to go over that again. And we can enable program change messages and bank change messages. And in the next video, our last video, we're going to look at managing all these presets and banks. But here's where we enable the ability for them to respond to incoming bank and or program changes. Now, there's a few other controls in the utility bar on top, and they're fairly self-explanatory. We have a tuning control. We have a master output volume. We have some metering over here. And then we have the history button, which allows you to step back and forth through all the modifications that you've made. And as far as automation, pretty much any parameter you can want is going to be accessible here. We have all the different body bridge settings, compressor, different effects, and the list goes on and on for all the possibilities of what can be automated. So anything can be automated. Let's automate the Wawa effect depth just to show you how it works. I'm just going to put it into touch mode and we'll create some automation. So there I've automated two of those parameters. And if we look here, we'll see that the effect depth has been automated there and show another automation lane for the frequency. So very simple. Let's take a quick look at the standalone version of Strum. Here we've got the standalone version of this operating outside of a DAW, and it's pretty much identical to what we've been looking at with one or two small changes. First of all, for the clock sync, instead of sync to host, we have a tap tempo. So you can tap a tempo like this, and you'll see the rate control adjusting and compensating to how fast I tap. Like that. And we also have an audio setup here for audio and MIDI setup. We can choose which of our devices we want to output audio from, the sample rate, the buffer size, and which MIDI inputs on our system we want to have Strum respond to. And the MIDI controls here are pretty much the same. We can enable or disable the program and bank changes, and everything else is the same. And in the next, our last video, we're going to look at working with the bank and program changes and saving our own presets.